most gracious Heavenly Father, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we do thank you today for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We just pray that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to this church today. For it's in Jesus' strong and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Turn with me to the Old Testament, to the book of Exodus, chapter 35. And I would encourage you to read chapters 35 and 36 when you have an opportunity. And I'll just pull a few verses to lay a context for the message that I believe God would have us here today. Exodus 35, starting at verse 4, you'll find these words. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commands, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord, whoever is of a willing Heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze. Verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they bought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all its service, and for the holy garments. They came, both men and women, as many as had a willing heart, and brought earrings and nose rings and rings and necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord. Chapter 36, verse 3. And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough. Amen. For the service of the Lord, Glory. to which the Lord commanded us to do. So Moses caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And all the people were restrained from bringing, for the materials they had were sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. I want to stop right there and say, it's our time. Yes. It's, our time. <laughs> it's our time. It's our time. You may be seated. It's our time. <laughs> Not Moses's. Amen. Israel's. But it's ours. Hmm. In 1999, Family Community Church, with a membership of just over 300 strong, accepted the challenge from God to step out on faith to build this first building on the land which God had given to us. This building was to be of sufficient size to allow us to grow with our community, to give us the ability to reach the number of people that God was sending into our community. Some of you that are gathered here this morning are people that the Lord has added to this body since this building was built. But the truth is that the construction of the building was the easy part. The real work still remains. Now it's our time to move on to the task of reaching the community and beyond for Christ. But first, we need to lay aside the financial concern imposed by a campus and a structure of this size. We must ensure that we pay for this building in such a way that it does not become a continual liability to the ongoing ministry of this church. Amen. We cannot allow indebtedness to hamper and hamstring the church's ability to do the job of the ministry that was given to us by God. Amen. And we cannot allow a constant demand of making building mortgage payments to sap the financial energy from this church. We constructed this building in order to be able to advance the ministry of the kingdom of God. As it has already been shared this morning, 
The advance pledges are just over $1,600,000 for the 4G campaign. Yeah. I want to thank you for your faithfulness and those that have stepped out in faith first. We know it was not easy in the climate in which you did it, but you did it anyway in faith. Amen. But those pledges are only a few. This morning, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to challenge, amen, amen, you to help to think about retiring the entire debt of the church. He wants you to pray about your part. Mm -hmm. There are three categories of individuals here this morning that the Holy Spirit wants to challenge. First, there are those of you who have previously made commitments to past campaigns and even to this 4G campaign. And you are being challenged to continue in giving in your 4G pledge. You may even be challenged as some have already done and have increased their pledges since the advance commitment dinner. Secondly, there are those of you who have previously made commitments to past campaigns and have chosen not to participate in this campaign. You are being challenged by the Holy Spirit today to earnestly pray to God about your resistance to what God is doing here and your personal struggle with it. Thirdly, there are those of you who have become a part of Family Community Church since this building was built and you are not presently giving anything to the 4G campaign. The Holy Spirit wants to encourage you today to get on board. He needs everyone yes, to do their part. Yes, Amen. This morning, I'd like to share with you over the next few moments three biblical principles from the life of Moses and the people of Israel during the construction campaign of building the tabernacle and how it impacts our time of campaigning for God's work here at Family Community Church. First of all, it's our time of challenge. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, this is the thing which the Lord commands saying, take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord God, gold, silver, and bronze. Moses came to the people and said, I have a message from you from God. And I want you to build the house of worship. In the rich history of Jewish people, this was a historic moment. God had never before directed a house to be built for worship. But now, he gave them the privilege of building a tabernacle for worship during their wilderness journey. Yes. God could have miraculously presented the tabernacle. He had parted the Red Sea and miraculously provided food and water for over a million people traveling out in the wilderness. But when it came time to construct the place of worship, God invited all of them to participate. Yes. I can remember meeting in one home and sitting at a person's table of one family, I won't call any names. And they had shared what they had been members of many different churches down through the years. And they had never been asked to be a part of a move of God like this. They felt so honored and so privileged just to be asked to participate in a move of God. They were ready for the challenge of God. Their hearts were willing. They realized it was their time. Now, it's our time. It's our time of consecration. Yes, sir. It's our time of consecration. Yes. The giving was from a willing heart. Verse 5 says, take among you an offering of the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Verse 21 says, everyone came whose heart was stirred, everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought the Lord's offering, not the tithe, an offering for the work of the tabernacle of the meeting, for its service and for its holy garments. They came, both men and women and children. They brought earrings and nose rings as an offering to the Lord. How are we to understand this response? Their hearts are stirred and their spirits were moved. Their hearts were stirred, their spirits were moved. The word translate heart and spirit both refer to the inner person. Yes. 
You remember some time back when we talked on the spiritual anatomy of man. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how God moves in the life of a person. And the spirit of man is the consciousness of man. Yes. That God doesn't talk directly to the heart. He talks to the consciousness of man, which is man's spirit. Man's spirit connects to man's heart. The heart is a manifold. Yes. And it's a manifold that flows from God into man's heart. And if out of that manifold, it flows three different ways, which is the soul of man. Mm -hmm. The soul of man has three component parts. That's his free will. Mm -hmm. That's his own volition. The second part is his intellect. That's his mind. The third part is his emotion. God does not speak directly into the soul of man. He speaks into the spirit of man. The spirit of man influences the heart of man, which is a manifold that goes down into the soul of man. Yes, affects his free will, affects his intellect, affects his emotions. So when we hear the word that God stirred the spirits and moved in their hearts, we understand what God was doing. The verb translates stirred and moved then refers to some kind of movement on the inside. Something was happening to these people. Now, we should take note of the emphasis here on the joyous enthusiasm of all who had the privilege of sharing this ex in this exciting campaign. Yes. They did not respond out of guilt or duty, yes. but rather out of love and a joyous excitement that was felt by all who were privileged to have a part in building and equipping this beautiful sanctuary. Yes. Amen. Amen. In accordance with the instructions of God. Yes. This sanctuary was important to the spiritual life of the Israelites. Do you realize that we realize that this generation of recipients was in Moses' day? Come on. Let me, let's say this and share with you this. Let God ask you, does God's grace stir your hearts? Come on now. Does he move your spirits when you hear about what God is doing? Mm. If so, we have a great and awesome privilege to respond to that grace. Yes, sir. Giving to God causes us to give of our material resources. Serve him with spiritual gifts. Yes. Obey him with our whole being. Yes. Even in our own day, eagerly and highly motivated congregation of a local church, is able to have a significant impact in the community and beyond. Yes. Over and over again, we read, which was given by what? A willing heart. Those that gave did so with a sense of privilege rather than reluctant surrender. Yes. The Apostle Paul gives this advice concerning giving in 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 10. And in this I give advice. It is, it is to you, it is to your advantage, not to be doing what you began doing a year ago. But now you also must complete his doing. That women is in readiness and desire to it, so that you may be what in completion of what you have. Yes. For there is first must be a willing mind. Yes. It is expected according to what God has, not according to what a person does not have. That's right. Equal sacrifice, not equal gifts. Here Paul speaks of eager willingness to help the people give. Yes. The giving was widespread in participation. In verse 21, <coughs> everyone came. Yes. Verse 22, both men and women. Verse 27, the rulers brought. Yes. Verse 29, the children of Israel brought. Yes. It appears that all the people, men and women, Thank rich you. and poor, brought gifts of all kinds. Yes. Their stirred hearts calls them to seek and to search for creative ways to give. Not excuses why they should not or could not give. If you take the time or the interest to notice, you will discover that all the words, all and every, appear in connection with the responses of the people. It's all the people, every person. 18 times in chapter 35 and 36. The response of the people is overwhelming in terms of the number of people that are involved. Everyone is involved. Yes, in a campaign the size of Moses was undertaking, you need involvement of everyone. The size of the task and the faces does it, it face was too much for just a small group to do. It would require everyone to be a part of it. The giving and the wonderful abundance of all of that 
is that every man, every woman, every child, every ruler brought something, every child brought something before God. Yes. The response of the people to Moses' challenges is overwhelming. The people's response in three ways. How did they respond? They gave, mm -hmm. they served, mm -hmm. and they obeyed. The people gave of their resources for the construction campaign. The skilled craftsmen helped to build the tabernacle. And the people obeyed the Lord regarding the building of the tabernacle. Everyone in Israel was given the privilege of giving of the material resources which he or she had been blessed with. While all were free to give or not to give, the text strongly suggests that there were few, if any, who refused to have a part in contributing towards the construction campaign of the tabernacle. The response is so heartfelt. The people gave so much that finally the workmen had to tell Moses to tell the people to stop giving. God is still in the business of building his household, building up his church by using his people. He didn't rain, rain it down out of heaven, but he raised up people. He stirred their spirits and he stirs their hearts and their hearts impacts their souls. Yes. He is adding people to the family. He is equipping those who are already in the family. Yes. All of God's work requires resources. Resources that God has blessed us with in the first place. Resources that can give back to God for work in building his household and caring for his people. If we are not giving, serving, or obeying, it may be because of fear of loss or something we may not have to give up. We may fear the loss of our precious time, our precious resources, or our precious reputation. So we hold tightly mm. to what we have. Reverend. It is only God's grace. Yes. It is only God's grace yes. that can loosen your grip. Right. It is only when we understand how much God has given us yes, sir. and will continue to give us yes. that we are free to give and to serve and obey, knowing that we are losing Nothing. And then finally, it's our time for consideration. It's our time for consideration. Verse 20 says, And all the congregation mm -hmm. of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. It is remarkable to realize that nothing is said of the immediate response after Moses declared the campaign. Crickets in the room, mm. quiet like it is here this morning. Perhaps they were amazed. Maybe they were in awe. Maybe they were dumbfounded. In fact, that they had not, that you could not hear a single word. Quietly, gradually, orderly, they departed to consider the word of Moses. This offering was not to be made on the spur of the moment. This offering was to be made with prayerful consideration. Yes, sir. They retired from his presence to consider the challenge that God had put before them and what their part may be in the work of God. Although we don't actually know what they said in their tents that night, allow me to suggest a few possibilities. I don't believe that they went home that night to deflect from the challenge that God had put before them by criticizing Moses or the campaign process and decided this just to be conveniently absent from the process. However, I do believe, first, they reflected on how God had miraculously delivered them from slavery in Egypt. Yes. When was the first and the last time that you reflected on God and what he's done for you in salvation? Mm -hmm. What has the Lord delivered you from? Mm -hmm. Secondly, they remembered how God miraculously provided manna from heaven. Yeah. When they needed sustenance, God provided for them. Amen. Surely each time we sit down to eat, we share grace of thanksgiving to God yeah. for all that God has made available to yeah. us. Yeah. Most of us have cabinets full of food. Our biggest problem is not whether we're going to eat or not, but what we're going to choose to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Finally, they realized Amen. how God had miraculously blessed them down through the years. As they looked back over their lives, and as they looked around in their tents, 
they realized the possessions they had, they had nothing that God did not provide for them. And neither do you and I. So when we go home today, and you begin to prayerfully consider your part in giving to God's campaign, look around your home at what God has done for you, and just how he has blessed you down through the years. Reflect as you look back at the years at how faithful God has been. Think about it. Think about it and pray about it. Amen. Amen. Pray over the matter and then fill in your pledge card and bring it next Sunday with you to God. Don't be conveniently absent like some are here today, but show up, step up, and put up for yes, God's work. Yes, in closing, Amen. it's our time. It's our time. It's our time. Yes. It's our time. Yes. You see, we can change our attitude in giving to God. The Bible tells us that God loves cheerful. a cheerful giver. Yes. God loves a cheerful Amen. giver. Yes. He doesn't want us to frown up in our face and worry about what somebody else and somebody else is not giving. No, no. It's our time to give. Amen. When we give, we have to get out of that old mode of thinking that the preacher is going to get all the money. We have to get out of that mode of thinking that somebody in the church is stealing all the money. We have to get out of that old mode of thinking that the church wants to do what I want them to do with the money, my money. And that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to give and to bless God in God's work. God will take care of those who may abuse the authority that they're under. You've got to give because God tells you to give. You've got to give because God is blessing you to give. You've got to give because God is blessing his work. God knew that it would take money to run his house. God knew that it would take money for the church to bless the widows, to bless the sick and the shut in, to bless the poor and the downtrodden. God knew that it would take money and resources for the church to bless the elderly to rule well or counted of double honor. God knew that the needs of the church so he told his people to do what? Give and to give cheerfully. Yes. God told his people to bring the first fruits to his storehouse. Yes. On this day, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to get caught up, mm. stirred up in your consciousness, stirred up in your heart, and allow your free will, allow your intellect to understand, allow your emotions to get involved in what God is doing. Get caught up in what God is doing. When you give to God, the Bible tells me that women, he is capable, willing, and able to open up the windows of heaven yes, and pour you out a blessing yes, that you don't have room enough to receive it. Isn't God and when you give to Almighty God, the Bible tells you that God is able amen, to make your enemies your footstool. God causes men to fall at your feet. Isn't God good? When you give to God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, you can rest assured that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. When you give to the Almighty God, the Bible tells me that God will rebuke the devourer and that old devil won't be able to take anything away from you that God has given to you. When you give to the Lord God Almighty, your prayer line will always be open and always hot. Amen. You'll never get a busy signal. The answering machine will never be on. When you give to God, the God of Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, I'm here to tell you that he'll make a way out of nowhere. I'm here to tell you, when you give to the Lord, it's like paying on your insurance policy. When you're talking about the preacher, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, when you give to the Lord, you're guaranteed to have a doctor in the sick room who will handle your every need. God is so good. When you give to the master, you're guaranteed to have a lawyer to fight your battle who's never lost the case. When you give to the Father, he's your friend. When all your friends have left your side, isn't God so good? When you give to my God, he'll give you life and he'll give it to you more abundantly. Amen. Well, brother preacher, how do you know that God would hear and answer my prayer? On, how do you know, preacher, that he can save me when I'm on my sick bed? Yeah. How do you know, Pastor McGinsey, that God will step in and even when my finances run out? How do you know, man of God, that he's a friend, yeah. amen, to the fatherless and a yeah. mother to the motherless? Yeah. Amen. How do you know, Pastor? Amen. Well, I can tell you this. On, One Sunday morning, I was lost uh -huh. in a world of sin. Yeah. I was down and almost out. Yes, sir. But I felt my Jesus reaching down to pick me up. Yeah. 
and turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. He healed my body. He fixed my mind and my soul. He gave me, amen, for me what I could not give for myself. How do you know well, brothers and sisters? Because I tried him for myself. I got to ask you that. Have you tried him for yourself? Amen. Amen. Won't he make a way out of nowhere? I heard the old folks say he's bread in a starving land. He's water in dry place. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the light of the world. But what I like most about my Jesus is that he's my savior. He's the one. He's the one. He's the one. When it was his time, but he's the one that stepped up and showed up when it was his time. When it was his time, he climbed up on that old rugged cross. He hung there, bled, and died. But one early Sunday morning, he gave it. I gave it all to Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely gave. Always trust him in his presence. Where I am, I surrender all. I don't know about you, but on that early Sunday morning, when he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand, he gave me a brand new walk. He gave me a brand new talk. He gave me a brand new life. Is there anybody here that knows about that brand new life? He did all that for me, but it was his time. That was my time to give back to a God that has loved me. God bless you. And I'm through. It's our time. It's our time to step up. The first thing you want to step up with is not your checkbook. The first thing you want to step up with is your heart. Yes, sir. You want to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. I was talking about the spiritual anatomy just for a moment ago and how God affects the soul, affects us who we are. We are a living soul. Yes. We have a heart that's in us. We have a conscience. That's our spirit. In order to be saved, God speaks to your conscience. Yes. The conscience speaks to the heart. Yes. And the heart has the influence, your free will to accept Jesus Christ. Intellectually, you must be able to understand the word of God. And then emotionally, you must move upon that. God is saying to someone here today, he spoke to your conscience this morning to affect your heart, for you to understand the word of God. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, Amen. hearing and hearing God. by the word of God. Amen. When you hear the word of God, and the day you hear, the Bible says don't harden your heart, but open up your heart and receive Christ into your life. It's possible that you're here today, and you're hearing all about 4G, and how a lot of us are excited about that. But God is excited about your soul. God wants to save your soul today. Yes, he does. God loves you, has a yes. wonderful plan for your life, but you must be willing to be moved by God. Yes. <laughs> you have to move. Amen. Everything that needs to be done for your eternal salvation has already been done. Yes. It's a matter of you opening up your heart, yes. opening up your life, yes. and saying yes to the Lord. Yes. 